interesting east, but I think it's going to be an even more interesting west. So let's start on the west coast with the Clippers versus uh, Golden State. That game's going on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, As we record. Bogut is out and uh, fractured ribs and potentially David Lee. What's that mean for this series? That means Swiss cheese defense uh, for anyone playing against that. And, and if there's any team that can take advantage of a team with no front court, it's the team with DeAndre Jordan and Blake Griffin. I think this is going to be really tough. I really... I you know what? I, I think people shouldn't sleep on guy like uh, guys like uh, Maurice Spates and and Jermaine O'Neal. I actually really like them. Ever since Spates was at the Grizzlies, uh, but you know Spates is more of a jump shooter, offensive guy, and and, J and Jermaine O'Neal can't be counted on for forty eight minutes. Obviously, but he has shown some athletic flashes. He has, he yes, has. he has. Yes. But you're still asking him to play mm -hmm. against Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan, who are both having career years. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, DeAndre Jordan on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they've just put up some nasty dunks. I mean, Chris Paul has to be just loving his life right now. Living in L.A., being the Clippers, uh, getting a look down the corridor at Kobe Bryant and, and your Lakers with the better record being in the playoffs, having these two bigs to pass to. I mean, remember he played years in New Orleans with... With a guy, David West. With, with guys like David West. But, yeah, but if you look at his game, he's much more suited to play with a guy like Blake Griffin, right? So I think this is going to be tough. I mean, the Splash Brothers would definitely have to come up big. But to me, Clay Thompson is just too hot and cold. I, I, I can't get on board with, with, with this Golden State team. Dwight, we got to see the two of us front row, uh, the Toronto Raptors versus this Golden State team. What were your impressions seeing those guys live? They were terrific, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm, I'm a Golden State fan. You know, I'm a closet fan on the, on the down low. But the deal breaker for me, Mark and Phil... Once Andrew Bogut went down to injury, I think all bets were off. I don't give the Golden State Warriors a chance in the series. The only concern I have for the Clippers is the front court depth. If you've watched any of the Clippers games lately, Glenn, Glenn Davis, big baby Davis. I'm surprised he's back, actually. Like, uh, uh, has has he, hasn't he put on weight to you? Have yeah. you seen yeah. him? He is, he, he is grossly out of shape. I don't know mm -hmm. what happens to him. Um, to me... If you're a professional athlete, whether you're playing or not, whether you're happy or not, your job is your body. Stay physically fit. I never understood that. You, <laughs> Sean it, Kemp, it is, Curry. <laughs> it is a privilege yeah. to play And you have guys who, who pay for your nutrition. Yes. You have, you, 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 yes. You, you, you can just tell your team, yes. okay, this is my nutritionist, feed me. Yes. I will go to the gym, train I me. I never you don't have to make decisions on this stuff. I that your, your job is your body. And, I, and I, I've gone on record, I say to, to my family, to my friends, the hardest thing is, the hardest thing in life, in my opinion, is to get the physical body in peak condition because not everybody wants to do it. I understand that. Mm. But still... For you to be in a professional environment, this is your livelihood. This is, what this you is do. your job. You're not getting this up. This is costing you tens of millions Absolutely. of dollars. Absolutely. Why, why would you let yourself go to Krispy Kreme donuts every night and eat a bunch of donuts? Go to McDonald's. Go to go to Domino's Pizza. Pizza. You can do this eat. once you retire. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Or do it in the off season for a couple of weeks. Once you're forty, go get fat. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So, so the only concern for me is the front court depth of the Clippers because after DeAndre Jordan. And, well, they had uh, Byron Mullins, but he's gone. But he's gone because the, 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 uh, the experiment failed. They thought he was going to be a stretch four, but when his jumpers weren't going down, it was that, a liability. that was a liability. He wasn't good defensively, and Doc Rivers saw that right away, and they got rid of him. Okay. Well, Danny Granger is six foot nine. You can kind of get in there a bit. Yes, but. and they've got Hito Turkoglu as well, who's got who's got massive playoff experience. He could be a four man, but. I just think Golden State, once they lost Andrew Bogut, yeah. Mark and Phil, that was the deal breaker for me. They're going to win a couple of games because of the hot and coldness of Klay Thompson. Anytime you have those shooters, the Splash Brothers, Stephen Curry and, and Klay Thompson, they're going to win you a game because there's going to be a night where they go as a team. Uh, my X Factor is actually Harrison Barnes in this. Him too, he has, he's regressed a little bit Six this year as well. 30 complete yes. defense because yes. cause they're needing big men minutes. Absolutely. Because we saw last year's playoffs, they actually played really well with mm -hmm. Lee at center and Harrison Barnes playing some small ball four. four. Yes, yep. if, if he can play anywhere close to that with a healthy Andre Iguodala, oh, they didn't have last well. year. Yes. I mean, their wings I'm not worried about. Like yeah. I think their wings can dominate the wings of, uh, of the Clippers. I mean... It, 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 I mean, I mean, at, at very least, watching this series, we're gonna get we're privileged to see Steph Curry, Chris Paul, mm -hmm. right? This is what, one of the best individual matchups 
of the first round. And, and I think Steph will score 45, 50 in one game, just win a game by himself. Sure, but sure. that's not going to win you a series. That, 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 that is correct. Like you said, the, as sure as they're hot and cold, okay? Uh, Steph Curry's had a fantastic year. You can debate who's going to be the first team uh, All-NBA point guard. Is it going to be Steph Curry? Is it going to be Chris Paul? You know, did, did the time that Chris Paul missed due to his shoulder injury, is that going to sort of sway votes towards Steph Curry's side? Steph Curry, for the amount, for the for the way he scores the ball. But he doesn't play defense. But he's a terrific passer. He he's is. top five in the NBA in terms of assists. We're just talking about the offensive side of the ball. I think Curry's the best point guard well, in the league. Well, there you go. For a guy who didn't play point guard two years ago, he's a convert. And I never knew Steph was going to be like this. So he's a quick release, Coming too. He just walks up. It's, 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 it's amazing with what's going on. Also, another interesting dynamic in this series um, with all the rumors you're hearing about Mark Jackson, um, mm-hmm. is it the players that have tuned him out or is it upper management that want Mark, Mark Jackson out? Mm-hmm. We're going to see in this series, do the players want to play for him? Mm-hmm. You understand? Are they going to compete? Do they want Mark back? Do they feel that Mark isn't a good enough coach to get this team uh, past a certain round in the playoffs? Do so they feel that he doesn't have enough experience? So that's also another dynamic that we have to look for in this series. Is it coming from Or is it possible that like Golden State, like a lot of people said, are overrated? They're, listen, they've always been a fun team to watch, Phil. But there's a difference between that does, and a contending does, team. Does, does overrated come into play with that? A little bit. Yes, I absolutely agree with you on that. Yes. Let's talk about Fear the Beard, guys. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is my favorite matchup of the whole playoffs, by the way. Do you think Houston's a legitimate contender going into this? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Houston is a legitimate contender, 100%. Uh, anytime you can play defense at the one and the five, to me, that's always key. Agreed. Patrick Beverly, one of the best on ball. I mean, Agreed. he's going to get people here. He's going he's gonna to foul out of games, but he's going to. And Jeremy Lin coming off the bench, I think that's a great role for him. Agreed. Omar Sheik, Dwight Howard together. Agreed. You're guaranteed big minutes. I love Terrence Jones, both sides of the ball. Yep. Parsons a better defender than a lot of people give him credit for. And James Harden is a, at least top 10 player, you could argue top five. Francisco Garcia off the bench as well. They can shoot the three, stretches the floor a lot. Um, to me, guys, this series and their, their run towards a championship, it goes with Dwight Howard. Um, 100%. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm not a fan of his offensive talent. But I'm a fan of Dwight Howard, what he brings to the table. When we, he brings it to the table. When he brings to the table. And, and he's and, better against all of this and, series, and, right? And, and Robin Lopez. Don't give Robin Lopez the opportunity to get confident. Dwight Howard. Great from, passer. Yes. Big man. D- Dwight Howard, from, from the time he steps to the arena, should let Robin Lopez know, dude, I'm the best center in the NBA. You're going to have no chance. I don't think Robin Lopez is going to be scared of this guy. Robin Lopez couple inches And I have a problem with that, guy. Phil. I have a problem with that. If you're right out, you need him to be scared of him. Absolutely. And that's where, you know, we have a problem with Dwight. Dwight is one of the top five players in the NBA. You may think I'm crazy for saying that. But he's one of the top five players in the NBA when he's engaged. If he's engaged, there's nobody better than this guy, than this guy on the interior. Okay, as limited as, as he is on the offensive end, if he feels like playing basketball, there's no one like him. Well, he still averaged 18 points, right? And 13 rebounds. And look, look, I was going to go to, to the one season in L.A. last year. He had a bad season. He led the league in rebounding and shot 57% from the field with a bad back and hating Kobe Bryant, not liking being in, in Los Angeles. So imagine... Right, new city, new coach, all of that players. Stuff, all of that. So imagine if he feels like playing Mm-hmm. Okay, he like and I he said, chose Houston, right? Yes, he chose, so he, he better took want thirty to be million dollars less mm-hmm. to get away from Kobe Bryant, not the Laker organization, but to get away from Kobe Bryant. This is his time to shine now. He's relatively healthy, and if he's engaged, and the team's built around with all the three point shooters. It, it, it's kind of like what he yes. had in Orlando, but better. Yes. I mean, in Orlando, you, you had some nice two guys. You didn't have James Harden. Yes, right. Like, Agreed. Like I didn't have whole, Chandler. Well, Hedo Turkoglu, Chandler Parsons. Yes, I understand that too, but. Going forward, this team should be scary good. Although, let's look at the other side of the ball. Portland, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, Portland, I, I don't think you should sleep on these guys. Wesley mm-hmm. Matthews, ever since he left Utah, I've been like, watch this guy. Mm-hmm. He's signed for $7 million a he's year. He's in a contract year or two now. Exactly. Mm-hmm. He, he's playing big time. To me, mm-hmm. this year is a top five two guard. You look at the defensive side sure. of the ball, offensive would, side of the ball. I agree with you. Uh, Batum's been playing out of his mind. Mm-hmm. Aldridge has been playing. I mean, there's so many good power forwards in the league. It's tough to say, but mm-hmm. all-star level. And then... Obviously, Damian Lillard. I mean, he's a little slacker on the defensive side, but on the offensive side. And Robin Lopez. Robin Lopez, Robin Lopez, as you said, big addition. 
You know, his ability... Mo Williams is what? Off the bench, Mo Williams. Uh, Mo Williams. And McCollum, the rookie. You have CJ McCollum. I really like CJ. And, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, he's going to be a great reporter after this is all done. I, I guarantee you. Yes. I, I, Communications I, I, degree. Mm-hmm. I'm penciling this in now. But Robin Lopez, to me, we're talking about off-air, is the ability for some guys just to understand their role. Yes. Right? He, like no one else... I, I can't even believe the Pelicans let him go, right? Him next to Anthony Davis would have been nice sure. right now. Mm-hmm. But... His ability to set, he sets fantastic, he mm-hmm. rolls, he, he, he never makes bad decisions, he keeps the ball high, he That's passes, right. but when he needs to shoot, he doesn't hesitate, he attacks the rim, he's a legit seven footer, yes. scary guy, he's a big guy, mm-hmm. and I just think their lacking is going to be their depth, I think their, their depth on the bench is going to hurt them, but I, I wouldn't be surprised to see this go both ways, Right. I'm going to call Houston in seven, just yeah. because I think... It makes a little more sense. I think James Harden and Dwight Howard can each win a game on their own. And between everyone else, it's going to work out. I I, I still think that Terrence Jones is going to have a one or two 2010 games mm-hmm. where where Aldridge is, is not going to have a great time guarding him and bring him outside because mm-hmm. Terrence Jones can stretch the floor. Right. We're, we're also going to see, as much as we've talked about the interior players, the Marcus Aldridge, Robert Lopez, Dwight Howard, Omer Ashley, Terrence Jones, I think this series is basically going to come down to who shoots the three the best. Because the threes are going to be flying in yeah. this series. Talk about Portland, Lillard, Wes Matthews, Nick Batum, Mo Williams. You flip it over to Houston side. Um, um, excuse me, Jeremy Lin, mm-hmm. James Harden, Chandler Parsons, Francisco Garcia, Terrence Jones. Threes are going to be flying all over the place. I think who ends up shooting the this is an obvious statement, but who shoots the best percentage in this series? I think we'll go a long way towards who, who we see winning this series. I'm with you. I think Houston wins in seven because they have game seven at home. Seven. I think it's going to go that long. And let's not sleep on Jeremy Lin, who, when he gets yes. hot, can take yes. over a game. That's a key matchup. Lin against Mo Williams. We're going we're gonna to find out mm-hmm. who, who plays the better role coming off the bench. Absolutely. Two things i got to bring up, guys. Uh, Portland very much have a little playoff experience. And Patrick Beverly has a torn meniscus. Mm-hmm. Clyde Drexler the other day said on NBA TV, he said, I played with a torn meniscus. It's not good. So have I. It's not easy. No. You can, you can, you can fend off the, the pain and the swelling by, by constant treatment, taking a leave or Advil as an anti-inflammatory. At the pro level, they've got even stronger drugs. Naproxen, where it's like 5 or 750 milligrams in a pill, so that just deadens the pain. You can get through that. But with how hard he plays, mm-hmm. talking about Patrick Beverly of the Rockets, he likes to pick up people full court. Will that be able to last over not only only one round, but over an extensive playoff run if Houston is fortunate enough to get that far? Well, it's tough enough to in round Houston one. He's, he's guarding Damian Lillard, Lillard yes. right? And Damian Lillard offensive, offensively is one of the most dynamic guards and in the league. constantly attacking. He doesn't slow down I all mean, the time. Uh, we yes. saw him in the All-Star break. Yes. Skills competition, three-point competition, mm-hmm. dunk competition. This, right. this guy is a maniac. Yes. I mean, yes. we can say all he wants about his, his non-ability to guard, but if he has to guard Patrick Beverly, mm-hmm. I think that's pretty good for Lillard because Beverly is not this crazy offensive threat. Right. And if they put Lin in, I think it's kind of a wash, but I think Lillard just mows through Lin. Mm-hmm. And so I I think Lillard actually has the ability to, uh, to be a big difference maker because Houston's going to have that, uh, that, that, that difficult decision. Do I play an injured Beverly or do I play Lin? Mm-hmm. Because I know a lot of their points comes from that point guard position. Okay, so we got two series left, fellas. The next one is OKC versus a Memphis team that barely got in the playoffs over Phoenix. What are you thinking about this one, Blake? As long as Russell Westbrook is healthy, man, as much as I, I – before the injury, Russell Westbrook was the, definitely – three injuries? Well, yes. <laughs> before, sorry. Before the, the third injury, yeah. Russell Westbrook had made the progression that I wanted to see him in terms of him being a point guard. Mm-hmm. I think the injury sort of took that away because we're seeing some of the old Russell Westbrook where he takes away – Shots, not only from Kevin Durant, from his other teammates as well. That being said, he is such a good basketball yeah. player that he is his productivity is needed wherever it comes from, be it scoring the basketball, scoring in transition, offensive rebounds. He's a ball hawk. His, his, his ability to take the ball off the glass and go be on a one-man fast break. He's a ball hawk defensively, and his competitive spirit is... As, listen, sometimes it may be a hindrance, but I think it's fantastic. I'm a guy who, li- who likes to 
play with emotion. He's like a mini Kobe that way. I like, think play, like the way he sees the he game. He doesn't care. He thinks he's the best player in the NBA right now. And his stop and right pop, now. how he'll go in 100 miles an and hour. And the stop, pop, that's unguardable. Is unguardable. 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 So, you know where I'm going with this. As long as Russell Westbrook is healthy, the Thunder are going to win. They're going to win. They're going to give the San Antonio Spurs a hell of a time in the conference final. I think that that's where it's going to end up being. As long as Westbrook is healthy, and this, this segment is short for me, they're winning all their series. Well, I think that makes a lot of sense. I think Reggie Jackson comes up big. I actually really, really like Reggie Jackson. Mm -hmm. If I had to play, if, if I was Scott Brooks, I would actually tinker with bringing Westbrook as a sixth man off the bench. I, I, I would be weird. Like, I, I, really like, I, I really like how Reggie Jackson runs his team. But, we, right, okay. uh, but we've seen Kevin Durant turn again. We've been talking about this offensive evolution mm -hmm. into a bit of a point forward as well as an assist number sure. way up, yes, right? For sure. and, and, and I've looked at games where they won as opposed to games that they've lost. Mm -hmm. It's not that Westbrook shouldn't be shooting. It's literally when Westbrook is shooting equal or slightly less amount of shots than Kevin Durant. They win almost every game. Mm -hmm. The games where he takes... You know, five, six, seven more shots. That's a problem. And, uh, because Durant has to be involved the whole time. Right. But when you're never sure where it's coming from, because they're both two of the most <laughs> unstoppable offensive players. Yes. But uh, but I think a big difference here, because I, I think you shouldn't sleep on Memphis. I think they're a very good wing defensive team, and they play in interior ball. I mean, we saw in years past, Memphis did give OKC a bit of a tough time. Now, will the likes of Steven Adams and a much improved Serge Ibaka. Uh, oh, 100%. Yeah, because his, his, his point production has really gone yes, up. Yes, he's actually seen a game this year. And I, I'm a big Perry Jones guy, even though no one likes Perry Jones. Jeremy Lamb. At, uh, Jeremy Lamb. And and I still don't know why he's starting, but Kendrick Perkins. Uh, so will they be able to offset Marc Gasol and Zach Randolph? And Zach Randolph? Because if they half-court basketball again favors a team like Memphis, I, I agree with you. The talent lies there in OKC to win. But the style of play is very reminiscent of a of a championship NBA, you know, playoff team with Memphis. This also can't be understated. It just happened yesterday. Uh, the NBA suspended Nick Calathis. It's going to bring their, it up. Their, their backup point guard for twenty games took an over the counter drug that he didn't know about. Whatever the case is, it, I think it's a little bit of a stiff fine if you ask me. But he is suspended for twenty games. They signed Beno Udrich. Uh, several weeks ago before the March 1st deadline as to where you have to be on a roster before March 1st if you want to be playoff eligible. So that's going to end up being a, a blessing in disguise for them because at least they have Beno Udrig as a backup point guard to Michael Conley Jr. who said to me, has had a terrific second half of the mm. season. His three-point shooting is much improved. He's really benefited from Rudy Gay being shipped yeah, well, out. Well, of, of course, absolutely. Uh, they've also improved their shooting um, capabilities by bringing in Mike Miller from the, from the Miami Heat and getting Courtney Lee in a in a in a. Oh, that, that was under, uh, a, a really understated move. If he you, played well in yes, Houston absolutely. and all those other years. Courtney Lee, yes. six four, six five. He's a three and D guy. Absolutely, three and D guys. Uh, 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 to me, on top mm -hmm. of your stars. Uh, you need to load your tech. Your Correct. Team with that. And of course, Tony Allen doesn't bring much to you on the offensive end, but his defensive capabilities are so good. That's why he's in the NBA. Oh, they're going to put him on Westbrook. They and, they're, and they're going to have to. And they're going to put him on Durant as well. He may not be as tall as Durant, but he's, he's strong. But he's strong. He's a bulldog defensively. He's a, he's a competitive, in your face type of guy. So we'll see how that, how that matchup plays out. But I, I just think, in the overall scheme of things, I just think the, the Thunder are they're too good. They're too good. I think Memphis was more capable of having at least a shot against the San Antonio Spurs, but the Thunder, they're too athletic. Kevin Durant, he's so darn efficient. It looks like he scores the ball two out of every three times down the he floor. He just looks so relaxed. He's just there, yeah, it's, I'm doing this. Comes in. When he misses, you're, you're surprised, aren't you? It's, 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 it's an amazing phenomenon with this cat. So you combine that with Kevin Durant, who's going to be the MVP this year, no question yep. about it. And... The health of Russell Westbrook, I just don't think that tandem is going to be beaten. Uh, we could talk about the San Antonio Spurs possibly playing them in the conference final, but I just have so much respect for the Thunder at this point that, and I'm with you on the Kendrick Perkins thing. You shouldn't be playing at all. Steve Adams got all the playing. I like Steve Adams. He came but, from a rugby background. I think he's going to be an X factor against tough. the big tough guys yes. there in Memphis. Yes. I, I, I think his he's a legit seven footer. Athletic and he doesn't and back down. Doesn't yeah. back down. I, I think him against Zebo and Marcus Sol is going to be a nice matchup because him yes. and Abaka against Zebo and Ra Zach Randolph. I mean uh, Zebo and Gasol. I'm excited to see that. Okay, so we got one series left, and uh, Dwight, I want to bring this to you because it's Dallas versus the Spurs. And yesterday, Steve Nash released a video from his finish line series, 
and he had dinner with Dirk a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they talked about the what ifs in the old days. And you're you're a friend of Steve's, Good and one of the questions right. that they brought up, and it's been all over the uh, social media universe, is what would have happened if they stayed together in Dallas? They would have won. They they would have won. You're telling me they would. They won. The Dallas Mavericks won in 2011 without Steve. Yeah. Okay. You slot Steve into what JJ Barea did in that series. They win. They might win multiple champs. Now, I'm not going to go on and say, would they have won three or four? I don't know. But let's be realistic. I've been a part of Basketball Canada since 1986. Steve has been a part of Basketball Canada since 19, well, I want to say 89. We went through the cadet, the junior program. Eventually got to the national team. So we bleed red and white. Steve put in his time with the national team. Steve's career, truth be told, took off when he stopped playing for the national team, okay? Because Steve gave his heart and soul to our program. What that entailed was, not only was he going through the 82 season, the 82 game grind, he was also playing in the summer with us. And he was one of our main players. There were, he had to play 35 to 38 minutes a night in a 40 minute game internationally, which in some cases might be tougher physically than the NBA is, okay? Take it from me, I've done it. So when he stopped playing for the national team, his career took off, and that was the decision Mark Cuban had to make when Steve's contract was ended. Mark Cuban, and I'm sure he, can, he wishes he could have a mulligan on this one right now, he thought Steve's career was over. Yeah. He had Steve Cash or Eric Dampier. You see? Well, there you go. Okay? Back and injury. He had the back injury. But well. it, worked it worked because they won a championship. It right? worked because of a lot of suave moves. Sure. After they absolutely. brought in Tyson Chandler. Without yes. Tyson Chandler. They don't win a championship. Without Jason Terry. You know, or Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd. 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 You know, there okay. are a lot of moves. But, 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 but I, I just think, to, to answer the mm -hmm. question, they would have won at least two. If Steve and Dirk you have those two and then a bunch of defensive players Come on who aren't now. that tough. Come on now. You got a selfless guy who knows who's supposed to get the ball. Come on, that, that's going to work. And just raining threes all and day. Then, and then offensively, you have to honor Steve. Steve is another 50, 40, 90 guy. Oh, that He's, pick and pop between Come the on two. now. He, he and Dirk, it would have been lethal. And Steve, and I can attest to this because Steve got me six to eight points on a nightly basis, just by, just by me keeping my hands up and be ready to shoot and score, mm -hmm. Steve makes the right decision nine out of ten times down the floor. He rarely turns the ball over. And for what he does, he, he's also a risk taker with, while passing the ball. And his assisted turnover ratio over his career has been magnificent. And he knows that Dirk is the best player on the team. He would have made sure that Dirk, in key moments, would have gotten the basketball. Oh, in so the there's no argument of who's the alpha, who's the None beta. None whatsoever. Because Steve is a selfless guy. Listen, what, whatever you see, but see, see with Steve on these Grantland interviews or in just interviews just a calm, in general. Regular guy. I can tell you, what you see is what you get with Steve. He's the most genuine, most humble, most selfless individual you will ever meet. Take that from me. Speaking about greatness, and I believe Steve is great, mm -hmm. Greg Popovich, is he having his best season ever as a coach? I th is he coach of the year? Absolutely. Look, I, look, look, if you take your top three players, yes. if you take Manu, you take Tony Parker, and you take uh, Tim Duncan, mm -hmm. look it up right now, how many minutes did they average in the regular season? Under 30, all 29 point something. What other team can say, I played my three best players under 30 minutes a game, and I have the best record in the NBA? Mm -hmm. I, I've played my bench. I've, I've sat my best players. I, I've turned guys like Patty Mills and Marco Bellinelli from almost irrelevant players to very useful players. I've turned a guy like Thiago Splitter, who most guys wouldn't have signed, into a starting center. He's turned guys like Boris Diaw, who most thought were overweight and, and over the hill, into a legitimate forward. He sees talent. And again, he has that system where if you don't if you don't fit in the system, you're gone. And he has a team where I don't want to play them. Danny Green. We haven't even mentioned half their good players. I mean, this is a team that legitimately goes nine to ten deep. You are preaching to the choir, Phil. <laughs> you don't have to convince me whatsoever. People who follow me on Twitter, they know that I was I was riding B-ball insider. B-ball insider on, on Twitter. I was riding the Jeff Hornacek train. They, they fell off a little bit. Listen, they won 25 more games this year than they did last year. Anybody who was, would follow basketball knows that, uh, that um, they were supposed to be tanking. A lot of, a lot of pundits, pro prognosticators out there were saying that, that they were going to be the second to last worst team in the NBA. So I was a Jeff Hornacek Coach of the Year fan for most of the year. 
you have for, to make the playoffs. But for what for everything you just pointed out, and you didn't even mention Kawhi Leonard and, and Danny Green. I didn't even have to. They won 62 games this year. And don't yeah. tell me they didn't do that on purpose when they're playing the Miami Heat in the finals. Yes. That they're playing game seven at home. And, and here, absolutely. And here's the thing. There's a stat out there. Good point. These, this, San Antonio Spurs is the first team to have the best record in the NBA the following year after losing in a game seven the previous year. And they're also the hungriest team in the NBA. I guarantee oh, you this no, year, every one of those players has no. tape, looks at it almost weekly, and they're, they're disappointed. Jim Duncan, Ginobili, the I stars. agree with you 100%. And you mentioned the two players earlier. I think they're a better team this year than they were last year because of Marco Bellinelli and Patty Mills. It was Gary Neal last year. Now it's Bellinelli, who has the ability to defend and ball handle like Gary Neal And Neal's he's did. bigger. And he's exactly. bigger. And he's a better basketball player, period. Okay? Patty Mills... It's unfortunate that he's taken away the playing time from Canadian point guard Corey Joseph. But listen, from an analytical st- analyst standpoint, Patty Mills is better than Corey Joseph. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is this year. Mm-hmm. He's a gunslinger. He hasn't met a shot he hasn't liked. But he's a percentage shooter. He stretches the floor. He's an aggressive guy. He's an energy guy off the bench. The Spurs, the Spurs, the Spurs. I love the San Antonio Spurs. I love Greg Popovich. If I end up being a coach someday, I want my teams to play the way... Do you love them more than OKC? Yes, I do. Now, here's the problem. As much as I've said I love, 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 love Greg Popovich and the San Antonio Spurs, the, the, the Thunder beat them all four games this year. Yes. That can't go unnoticed. Now, anybody who knows me know that I'm not, I'm not a very big proponent of of the regular season because coaches and scouts make their money in the postseason. The game slows down. You get to pick apart a team's flaws. Who plays the better half-court basketball? The Spurs play the best basketball, period, fill in the NBA. Period. I think the Thunder should be given some credit to how they've improved on that, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because the spacing with the body. They've improved, but they're not as good as the Spurs still. No. Not as good as the Spurs. And as much as I love the Thunder... As I said, the Spurs, they're, the way they play, <laughs> I have to say this, and I, I get emotional talking about the Spurs because... Because they play the game the right way. To get players like Patty Mills, Danny Green, um, Jeff Ayers, um, the, the kid from New Zealand, I can't even think of his name right now. Oh. Uh, the, the, Baines, Aaron Baines, Tiago Splitter. Let me tell you something. If I'm, doing, if I'm doing a pickup game, I'm not picking those guys no, to play. No. Okay? But when they... If it wasn't for the Spurs, those guys would be in the D-League That's right what I'm now. talking about. about. Let me tell you something. Listen, Danny Green, he made 25 threes in the NBA so three Finals D last guy. year. Makes sense. But that's all he can do is shoot threes. Gentlemen, he's not a very good ball, ball handler. Not a very good playmaker off the dribble. But his job is to, is to stretch the floor out by being a three-point threat. They do that. The, the way the organization, R.C. Buford, Greg Popovich, get their, their star Hall of Fame players, not just also ran, their star Hall of Fame players to be selfless, mm-hmm. to do what's good for the common team. They don't care how many points they score. How they get guys to sign for less. These guys all should be in the Carmelo Anthony Amari Stoudemire, Richard Lewis, stratosphere in terms of in terms of salary. Gilbert Arenas, who doesn't even play in the NBA, still collecting is the checks. third highest paid player um, in the NBA. And Tim Duncan, Tony Barker, and Manu Ginobili aren't even close to that. And these guys have the best record in the NBA. Are you amen, kidding me? Amen. Come on now, that's crazy. Seventeen playoffs in a row. You cannot beat that. You can fifty wins. Every year. Well, that's Tim Duncan right there. And the one year they didn't get the 50 wins was the lockout shortened season. That's, that's to me, mad respect. That's all i got to say, mad respect. So I think we all have the Spurs coming out of the West. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say yes because I think the Thunder have the talent to do it, but I think the Thunder are their own worst enemy. I think the Thunder have the ability and the talent to win the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I think they have enough of everything be it interior presence, guard presence, Derek Fisher, Reggie Jackson. I just think that for me to count on them all playing nice for this many series, no injuries to Westbrook and all this, I believe in consistency and the Spurs have consistency. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with you with the Spurs, but my gut's saying, the 
Are you concerned at all, both Mark and Phil, mm -hmm. with the dynamic down the stretch of games between Westbrook and yes, Durant? Yes, absolutely. Every day. Absolutely. Every day. And that's the only... If they can get past that, they beat the Spurs. As much as I love the Spurs, mm -hmm. if they can get past that and the health of Westbrook, they'll beat the Spurs. All I'm saying right now, if that team had Harden instead of Westbrook with Reggie Jackson, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. Guys, who's winning it? I'm saying Spurs. I'm saying Spurs. They're, they're the hungriest. They have the depth, and they have Game 7 at home. You got to knock out the champ, man. I'm going to go with the and, and, and they're right there. They had the knockout blow, and they didn't, and they didn't throw it. If you want the truth, the Spurs should have won last year. In yeah. Game 6. 28 absolutely. seconds. Was there 28 seconds of doom? You can question Greg Popovich taking Tim Duncan out of the game after he already had 17 rebounds. As a, If I'm a coach, and I'm not trying to second... I no, you know what? Let me take that back. There's no reason you I ever am, take the, Tim Duncan out of the end of the game. I'm second guessing the, the best coach in the NBA, in my opinion, right now. Well, you wouldn't be the only one. Okay. If I'm going to lose, I'm going down with my five best players, no matter what the matchups are. On the floor. I'm having my five best players on the floor and not having Tim Duncan on the floor after he already had 17 rebounds in the game. <clears throat> you don't take that out of the game. Okay, uh, they missed free throws that were crucial. Well, those which, Tim Duncan little layups he missed. Tim Duncan, he did all of that. Okay, but I'm keeping Tim Duncan in the game. That was it. 20 sec 28 seconds. I guarantee you, he's there at the end of the game. No question. If they make it to the same spot, 28 seconds changed the entire narrative of the Spurs and LeBron James. We're applauding LeBron James now for as well as he played in the fourth quarter of that game I six. And it's the only reason I think there's a chance he stays in Miami. Well, there you if we're go. talking about that. If they only have one championship, then this and they lose this year. There's this one guy that I follow on 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 Twitter. His name is Robert Latal. He's Black Sports Online. He firmly believes that the team is broken up, and LeBron James doesn't get married if they lose last year. Oh wow! You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. But because yeah, yeah. everything went rosy for them, yeah. you know that's that was. You know, the, the, the deal breaker for them, I guess. But listen, I think the champ has to be knocked out. What helps the Heat this year is the 2-2-1-1-1 two, two, one, one, one format. Right. It's no longer 2-3-2 two, two, where you go back to San Antonio for games 6 and 7. You still have okay? game 7 in San Antonio. Yes, you do. But you, what, the thing is when it's 1-1-1 one, one, one now, there's no sense of urgency per se to win that game 5. You understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. you know, because you know the, the game six and seven, I may be saying it wrong, well, no, it makes but, sense. but the urgency factor goes out the window because of the one 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 now. Okay, two three two, like last year the Heat did they go back to Miami down? They were yes, down. they were down three two, they were down. Yeah. and they had they had that in their back pocket. I think the one 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 may help the Heat in some way in that series, but because the Spurs have game seven at home. That could be the determining factor, but I'm the I'm the boxing guy. I think you have to knock the champ out, and I think Miami will repeat this year. And is San Antonio the best team? Uh, let's just assume every team plays their potential. Is are they the best team coming out of the West to beat Miami specifically? The, in my opinion, Phil and Mark, I think San Antonio is the only team equipped to beat the Miami Heat because ball and body movement is what beats the Heat. Okay, and it worked last year. Um, like I said, 20 seconds of doom. That's what happened here. I think the way the Thunder um, play, they play into the Heat's hands because they play to say the ball stops. Dwayne Wade, Westbrook, one -on -one. LeBron, yes. Durant, Ibaka, uh, Bosh, yes. Stretch. Yes, yeah, all yeah, of that. I, get that. I, I just get think that. I just think the Spurs and their selfless ball not having agenda mentality is what yeah. beats the Heat. And I think they're a better team this year. And Marco Bellinelli and Patty Mills are going to be major, major, major factors going forward. And let's not let's we cannot downplay or understate the importance of Kawhi Leonard about to, say that. to the San Antonio Spurs. Mm -hmm. Their 19 game winning streak coincided with him coming back from injury. He's a good matchup on LeBron. He's put on some and weight. he missed the free throws in that game six. That too. That's and burning his soul inside. Absolutely. Oh, oh and as, as a closing note on this subject, um, what you're saying, how people uh, look at the whole Miami situation, different maybe LeBron doesn't get married, all this. Imagine San Antonio won, how people are looking at Duncan now. 
Right? Another ring? Five rings. He might be the best player in this era, right. including LeBron like, James. Like, like, to me, that happens. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Laker fans everywhere, but he's jumped Kobe. Absolutely. I would agree. I would agree. There's no question about it. No question. Because you can, if you really want to dig deep, you can say that Kobe Bryant, you know, rode the coattails of Shaq. And Pau Gasol. Now we all know that they couldn't have won without each other. No matter, you know, the, the spat that that Shaq and Kobe had, and you know, Pau Gasol being labeled as soft sometimes, which I think is, you know, that's I think it's ridiculous, but that's just, but he's not Charles Oakley, ladies and gentlemen. He's a, he's a he's a skilled power forward. But you know, Tim Duncan, he changed a franchise. He changed a franchise. And he would have, it would have been five rings since 1999. Defense player of the year, MVP, MVP final, world, everything. All of that. And, and he did it the right way. Same team. Absolutely. Coachable guy. Yep. Likeable guy. Absolutely. Selfless. All of that. Agreed. I'm sticking with Miami in seven. Like the White said, you got to beat the champ. But um, Spurs, they're going to they're gonna drive him uh, hard. Uh, too much respect there. Well, we got to wrap up in a minute. But uh, this is, I mean, beyond the NBA playoffs that right now, this is a very special week for us at Hoops Lounge. And Phil, I want you to tell everybody, I got a surprise. Uh, I want you to tell everybody what happened a year ago this week. Uh, a year ago is... I'll be back. <laughs> Keep going. Um, a year ago is when we started and launched our official uh, website, hoopslaunch.com. So this is basically us switching up from a couple of guys just talking about basketball and a couple of guys just, you know, and, and actually putting it out there. You know, it, it, it's a really weird dynamic from just like, like being at a bar with a bunch of friends, just talking basketball. And it's actually getting into, wow, on that level. <laughs> Look at this guy. And, and then it, it's been building up. And, <laughs> and honestly, um, um, above everything else, oh, look at this. That car is the toy. Um, this is going to snap on my head. But uh, you know what? Honestly, I got to take this time to give a lot of thanks to, uh, uh, to gentlemen like Dwight, Pete Yiannopoulos, uh, all, of our, all of our friends at TSN. All the guys from, uh, we've made so many friends in Toronto, Montreal fans. I mean, uh, all our, our photographers, our graphic designer, our web designer, Bobby Zamal, who designed our, our original site. Moda, Moda is over in Switzerland right now with the bad back. He plays ball. Hi, Moda. He's it's not he's, working. He's aching. Oh, it's not working. This is ruining the effect. Uh, it's gotta be a happy birthday. But uh, we've had so <laughs> many help, so much help along the way. Oh wow, Phil's got a letter and. Uh, uh, so we just want to thank everyone. I mean, the, the new Raptor slogan, We the North, I mean, it really talks about basketball in this country in general, how much it's grown. I mean, yeah, honestly, like, uh, we feel so blessed to have so many amazing people in our lives. And, and, and literally, it's just like all we want to do is bring the basketball conversation back to the people. Because we just feel here in Montreal and Canada, there's not enough people talking about this. And it, it, it's kind of like this closet love. You, you know, like everyone's talking about hockey and everything. But, you know, every night I step into the gym. And there's there's 20 people staring at the basketball screen. Of course. Anyone who tells me that basketball is not popular in Montreal is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would agree with that. And speaking of, from on my behalf, I want to thank these two gentlemen for having a dream and not buying into people telling them that they can't. They have the forum here. They have the Hoop Lounge website. Congratulations to both of you guys on the one-year anniversary. I think what you guys are doing is great for basketball. It opens basketball, not only in Montreal, but to the masses. You guys have this forum here. I'm very honored and privileged to be one of your friends and to be invited to talk on this program. You can ask me any day of the week. You know me. I can, I can go on and on and back. Oh, we're going to have you more. You know this, right? as, as, as you know, I can talk for days, uh, talk about basketball. I'm, just a, I'm a basketball lifer. And all you people out there need to get on board with these two gentlemen because they have, they have your best interest in terms of basketball at heart. And these guys are a true testament as to guys who just, they're lovers of the game. They watch the game. They study the game. They've got different opinions. They go at it from a different angle than, than myself, who's been, a, who's been a basketball player at the professional level, the international Olympic level. And they brought me on board to help them out, try to spread the word as much as possible. Montreal is a definite basketball market. We do understand that the Montreal Canadiens do rule the world here, along with the Montreal Alouettes and the Montreal Impact. But basketball is here to stay as well. And these guys are going to try to do their best to bring basketball to the masses, to bring it to the, to the casual fan, 
to the intermediate fan and to the basketball fan that, that I am. And I know that some of you guys out there are as well. So please get on board with these two guys. Hoop Lounge, they're fantastic for what they've done. These guys are going to be around till the day they die. I know they are. They're going to get themselves more out there. They deserve a shot at the big time. And I have nothing but mad respect for these two guys because they're doing a fantastic job and it's only going to get better going forward. So congratulations to you guys. I have much respect for you guys. I really appreciate it. You guys are doing a great thing. Please keep it up. Keep the grind going because I know it's a lot of hard work. There's going to be a lot of doors that are closing your face. I want you guys to punch your fist and put your, through the, put your foot through those doors and don't let anybody ever tell you that you guys can't. Don't ever listen to that word. The sky's the limit for you guys going forth. Uh, you know what? I want to thank you very much for saying things like that because honestly, uh, number one, it, it is work but it's a passion. I mean, yes. like, like, like all day I'm on websites learning True. stats. Like, this is what I breathe. And mm -hmm. uh, let's not downplay either the work that Moda's is doing actually over, overseas right. uh, with FIBA basketball, mm -hmm. making connections there. Uh, we're uh, like going to be in Spain this summer, by the way, so we're, we're doing it. You know? Good, it's good. Doing Congrats, it. of course. Uh, yeah, so he's been making some contacts there and, and, and spreading the hoops around to love. Uh, I mean, we, we have people in French, Germany, all over the place. So this is an international game. I mean, what, what, like a big thing we try to bring across is not only the NBA game, but with Mark, with his Naismith moments, the Canadian side of the game and, and, and the development of the game with Moda, the international side of the game. I mean, it, this is a global sport and we want to con continue this conversation because honestly, like, there's, there just needs to be this representation of the average fan. And, and, and especially people know, you know like especially with with the new slogan we the north i mean mm -hmm. i mean it pe but people are thinking toronto and cities like that i mean people have to understand that you can just walk down the streets of montreal all the caps jerseys everything people may not know it on the same level as someone from new york but i'm telling you compare that to someone from like like vancouver or like or, or even atlanta where they seem to average 5000 mm -hmm. fans i mean uh, montreal is a budding city and uh, we're just really thankful uh, for guys like yourself who've been instrumental. It's my my pleasure, my privilege. Anytime you want to have me on board with one of these forums, I'm all for it. Uh, okay. We definitely will, and we'll promise uh, next time uh, you won't have to wear the hat. Oh, that's so. okay. <laughs> this, is, this is fine. This I'll is just fine. tell one quick story before we blow out the candles. Uh, we were going to do a photo shoot a year ago. People ask me about, is Montreal really a basketball city? We're trying to do a photo shoot a year ago, and we called we call Dwight, we called all our friends trying to get a gym. We needed a gym to do a photo shoot. We couldn't find a gym. A whole weekend, because mm -hmm. every single gym in the city was booked. We ended up shooting outdoor at a playground, and it being beautiful, but it just speaks to how many people play this game, mm -hmm. love this game yes, in the sir. city. Mm -hmm. And it's nationwide. I, I love the slogan. I think it's a FIBA slogan, one game, one love. Yes. It's, it's all over the globe, and we're just happy to be part of it. So uh, it's a happy birthday. Like you said, your baby only turns one once, so mm -hmm. let's, let's blow out the candles. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. One, two, three. So uh, this has been a great episode of Hoops Lounge, uh, our NBA playoff. Check us out on our website, hoopslounge.com, on Facebook. And on our contest, it's still going on. You have it's Sunday till midnight. Playoff guys, basketball. I want to thank you, to Dwight, for being on. My uh, pleasure. Phil, thanks for being back. We're, we're in studio Always. today. And uh, enjoy the NBA playoffs. See you soon. Catch you next time in the lounge, guys.